question. Well, God gave us the Ten Commandments as a guide to the activities and decisions in our daily life. David and Tracy Sellers of Vows to Keep Marriage Ministry believe that these ten guidelines can also be used to help restore a marriage and make it stronger. Last week, they took a look at the first two commandments. Jennifer is with the Sellers in part two of applying the Ten Commandments to marriage. Third commandment talks about what we say. It says, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And I think it goes past the oh my G-O-D that we hear very commonly in our world. So it goes beyond that to being careful with what we say because what we say represents God. And people are watching and people are wondering why we're throwing the name of God around flippantly. And I'm embarrassed when that happens, but I'm appalled when I am talking about David in a negative way mm. and how that misrepresents God as well. Because truly we are Christ's ambassadors. We've been called to share his name with the rest of the world. And people, like I said, they're watching, they're looking for glimpses of it. And according to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, we've been given the task of reconciling people back to him. So this is our ministry. This is our job, no matter what our occupation is. And we can do it together as a couple. James uh, chapter 3 has a lot to say about the power of our mouth. It's saying, you know, we could take that ministry seriously, but out of the same mouth of blessing, we also find cursing. And the, uh, the verse that, a couple of verses that really stick out to me, it says the tongue is a small thing, and it's true, but it has the capability to set a forest on fire. And there's been times, I'm sure, in everyone's marriage where I am literally tearing my marriage apart with the words I'm using. Mm -hmm. I, I think it, the, the next verse says, if anyone can control their tongue, that proves they have perfect control over himself in every other way. And I'm not there yet. This is not one of my strengths. But the key thing, I think, about those verses is to understand it's not so much what the tongue is doing, it's what the heart is doing. Because that is where those words are coming from. And we have to really think about what's going on in my heart. And, and Pray and seek that God would use your mouth to be a witness for him and, and, and a strong, strong communicator about how a holy life will look and how that will affect your marriage. You know, that just, it feels to me so important as you apply that to marriage. We need to apply that to every avenue of our lives, but Satan desires to destroy marriages. When marriages are destroyed, the, the spin-off effect is so splintering. It affects so many people. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I think in marriage, that is just such a key to remember exactly what you just said. What about commandment number four? So the fourth commandment is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And really it's, it's an edict to rest and to focus on God. He's saying, this is time to look to me. And we can ask ourselves in our marriage, are we taking time to get away together, even if it's just in the bedroom to shut the door, just to be together in idleness, to be together in prayer, to be together asking God, what do you have for us right now? Because a Sabbath is rest, it's worship, and it creates unity. There's a calmness that comes with being together with David and having no agenda and just resting in God, having that Sabbath that's really restorative to our marriage. Because if we run our lives at red line all the time, which I'm very guilty of doing, we're going to burn out and there's no Sabbath there. Yeah, I think in most marriages, there's someone who's a little more driven than the other person. In our marriage, that's actually me. I, I'm someone who, when I see that there's time for idleness, I'm like, okay, that's cool. You know, as a family, you guys can rest. It becomes, though, where I turn Sabbath time into me time. I, I want to accomplish something. Mm -hmm. and, and being that driven person, I have to recognize that I, too, need to rest. I, too, need to, to, to live by the truth that I don't always have to be accomplishing. I have to trust that God has got my needs met already. I think it's also tempting to let media be our rest, right? Where, where we want to lounge and, and watch TV. But the purpose of this is that we would get quiet and still enough that we would hear God's voice. And with all the things that are happening in our day and age, that's hard to do, very hard to do. In our kids' generation, I, I'm convinced that this is going to be perhaps even one of the harder mm -hmm. things that they will face as well. 
because there seems to be a lot of need for constant interaction, constant mm -hmm. um, engagement. And it's just something that I think as families, we have to set a good example for them. We have to be ready to sit down and unite with each other, to talk about what things we should be worshiping God about, um, to talk about what things we should be giving over to God, and really to allow some peace to happen in our home. And speaking of good examples, I think the fifth commandment, we can also set a good example for our kids. The fifth commandment is honor your father and your mother because they're watching what we're doing with our parents if they're still living. And we can, in this age that our parents are in, maybe they need some more physical care. Maybe they need someone to come alongside them. And that's one way that we can honor our mother and our father in our marriage. And I can honor his parents and he can honor mine. And our kids are definitely watching that. And that all these commandments and this one go back to that greatest commandment that we talked about earlier from Jesus from Matthew 22, loving our neighbor as ourselves. First loving God, because then when we do that, then the natural progression is to love our neighbor as ourselves. And in this, this situation, our neighbors are our parents. And it comes back to you because <laughs> they're going to be someday honoring you, you hope. <laughs> <laughs> and that's right. You, you hear the... Uh, the the, the phrase is something about your child will someday pick out your nursing home or will take care of you. <laughs> yes, show your honor to their pure parents so they will grow up and wanting to do the same thing for you. Yeah. Well, those are commandments one through five. Dave and Tracy Sellers break them down with a look at how they can be applied to marriage. They could be applied to life. I think everything they just said could be applied to your individual life, whether you're married or not. But if you are married, really ponder how God is challenging you to take these points and grow your marriage in the way that God desires it to be. He does want you to set a good example, not only for your spouse, as that is going to just further that bond, but for those around you and for those children.